Have you been wanting to try a new operating system on your computer, but not necessarily install it yet? Because you don't want to go through all that pain of setting up a whole operating system, get it to how you like it, but then turns out you don't really like the operating system, and switch back to the old operating system and get everything back to how you like it? Maybe you want to try the new Windows 11, or even a version of Linux, or maybe even the Mac OS. So there is a way you can try out a new operating system without having to uninstall your current operating system. A way you can do this is by a virtual machine. And so in today's video guys, I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up and install a Linux virtual machine. So there's no time to waste, let's get right into the video. So your first step you want to Google Linux Ubuntu and scroll down to where you see download Ubuntu desktop and go ahead and go there and then on your right hand side you should see the download button go ahead and click download the reason why you want to download this before downloading the VM software I'm about to show you guys is because this is most likely going to take longer than downloading the virtual machine software so I'm going to go ahead and just go back up to Google and type in VMware. And scroll down and then you should see somewhere where it says Workstation Player Evaluation. Click on that. So it should take you to VMware's website. All you have to do is scroll down until you see Try Workstation 16.0 for Windows. Go ahead and click Download Now which I already have installed, so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this. Now since you have everything installed, you wanna go ahead and set up the VMware player. All you have to do is go to the file you just downloaded and open it. Go ahead and allow this have to make changes. So you wanna click next. Go ahead and accept the license agreement. Click next. So this is asking you where you wanna install your VMware workstation if you have multiple hard drives or a certain file location you want to set it to which I actually do since I only have 256 gigabytes of OS storage because I run my OS off of an SSD and then I have two hard drives in my computer so I'm going to go ahead and change this to my hard drive I'm going to go ahead and find my hard drive that I want to install it to then I should already have a folder for VMware I'm going to go ahead and Click on it and click OK. Then it's asking if you want an enhanced keyboard driver. Honestly, you don't need this. If you want to try it out, you can. I personally haven't. I don't know what features are necessarily special about this driver. It's asking if you want to add VM Workstation console tools into the system path. You want to go ahead and keep that checked. Go ahead and click Next. Then it's asking if you want VMware to check for updates at startup which I do, and it's asking if you want to join the VMware Customer Experience Improvement Program. Uh, considering I might get a whole bunch of emails, I'm going to go ahead and check this. That's all up to you guys. I assume there's going to be a lot of emails they might send you that you most likely won't care about. But anyways, go ahead and click Next. Then it's asking if you want to add a desktop shortcut and add to the Start Menu Program folder. I'm going to go ahead and keep all these checked. If you don't want it on your desktop or in the start menu program folder, which is just whatever is in your start menu down here, I'm going to go ahead and keep these checked. Go ahead and click next. Then click install. And I'll start installing the VMware workstation. Okay, now it's done. Go ahead and click finish. Now, if you add it to your desktop, you should already see the shortcut for it. Click on it. Now, it's showing that there's an update. For the sake of this video, I'm going to skip this version. But if I remember, which hopefully I do, I'm going to come back and install this. Because ideally, you want this to be up to date. You don't want a machine that you're running. If you use it quite a bit, to all of a sudden not work because an update or even lose your whole machine and lose everything on that virtual machine because of an update you didn't install. 
So now you want to go to create a new virtual machine. Click on it. And it's going to ask you where you want to install the virtual machine from. This is where you go ahead and choose the ISO. So go down where it says installer. Click on it. Then you're going to want to go over to browse. Then search for the OS, which should be in your downloads folder. Go ahead and open that ISO. Click next. Now it's going to ask you to personalize Linux. So this is going to have you type in your full name. So my full name, Tekehefe. Then for username, for username, I'm just going to go ahead and use Tekehefe. And don't use any capital letters. It won't work. Then go ahead and type in your password. Click next. Now it's going to ask you what you want to name the virtual machine. I'm just going to go ahead and name it Linux Ubuntu. You can name it whatever you want. Then it's asking where you want to install this virtual machine. I'm going to go ahead and go to my hard drive because I do not want to install it on my C drive. Okay. Then once you already have the location set to where you want it, most of you are probably going to want it to your C drive. I'm going to go ahead and click next. Now it's asking you how much storage do you want to give this virtual machine. It's going to use part of your hard drive that you haven't installed on. Most likely you don't want to use the recommended amount of storage space. Just because I want it to run smoothly, I'm going to go ahead and do 256 gigabytes of storage. It's asking if you want to store virtual disk as a single file or multiple files. And it's automatically set to split virtual disk into two multiple files in case eventually you want to move this virtual machine over to a different computer if you get a new one but it might be a while till i get a new computer so i'm just going to go ahead and use a single file because i don't know if i'll still be using this then then already has the rest of the specs set up for you but most of the time this isn't where you want it so it's not letting me customize the hardware Maybe it's because I don't have the newest update installed, or maybe even I just need to restart the VMware program. I'm just gonna go ahead and chuck power on this virtual machine after creation. That way I can go back and customize the hardware. Click finish. Okay, now you should see in the left hand pane that your virtual machine is set up. I'm gonna go ahead and go to edit virtual machine settings to tell you guys a little bit more about this. The processors, this is the amount of cores you have to use for your virtual machine. So keep in mind, you can only use the amount of cores that you have in your current PC build. So I only have four cores. I definitely don't want to use no more than two. And I definitely don't want to use one, even though it's just Linux. So I set it to two. You just go over here and set it to whatever amount you want. And then the other thing you might want to change is the memory. Usually by default, it's set lower than four gigs. I have a total of 16 gigabytes of RAM. So ideally you want at least four gigabytes for a machine because let's face it, most laptops these days come with eight gigs, but since it's only Linux, I shouldn't not need more than four. So I went ahead and set mine to four gigabytes. You can change this just by clicking on the size that you want. Let's say I want 32 gigabytes. I just click on 32 gigabytes. I'm gonna go back down to four. And I'm gonna click okay. So now let's go ahead and start up the virtual machine. Look at this pop-up, go ahead and click okay. And now it's going to install Ubuntu. And after this, you should be able to set up your Linux Ubuntu operating system on this virtual machine. Now, one thing to note is don't just go ahead and X out of it like you would on a normal tab. You want to shut down your machine first. The reason why you want to do this is because your whole virtual machine could just die on you. And next time you go to open it, you'll get an error and you lose your virtual machine and everything on it or it might let you open it, but then it will get to the boot 
like you're booting up from a computer, but then it will stop you at the boot and say that something's wrong with a file somewhere or there's some kind of issue. So I cannot stress enough, just make sure you power it off by up here. That's pretty much it guys. I hope this video helped you out. I'm also gonna create some other videos involving virtual machines, like installing maybe Windows. And I'm currently working on trying to figure out how to install and create a Mac OS virtual machine. And let me tell you, I thought it'd be easy as Linux, just find the ISO file and just adding it and creating a virtual machine of the specs that I want for it. But it wasn't that easy. I ran into an error, so hopefully I can figure out what's going on. I might not try the monetary OS, which is why I was trying to use for the Mac OS. I might just go ahead and use Big Sur. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you guys like this video, you know what to do by now. Give it a huge thumbs up. Get subscribed down below. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.